Uh, for our game, uh, we will be using the Tiled Map Editor to create our levels. Uh, if you're not familiar with Tiled, um, it is a fantastic 2D level editor um, that will allow you to edit your tile maps, place images. Um, you can also use it to add metadata to your levels, um, and all of that can be exported out to a JSON object, which we can use to import into our phaser game. You can find Tiled at mapeditor.org, and you'll be taken to this page here. And to download Tiled, uh, go ahead and click on the download at itch.io. And then here, you can click on the download now button. Uh, so Tiled is a free tool, uh, but you can definitely help support the developer by making a donation. Uh, you can either pay for the program or you can make a different uh, contribution down here. Um, if you don't want to pay anything, just click this link here, and it'll take you to the downloads page. And from here, um, you just need to choose the appropriate installer uh, for your development machine. And then go ahead and click on download. Uh, when it, while that's downloading, um, one thing I do recommend is you can take a look at the documentation here. Uh, the documentation gives you little uh, like tutorials on how to get started with Tiled. Uh, it goes through all the different tools that are available in the application. Um, so it's definitely a good reference uh, for while you're working with the program. Uh, once Tiled is downloaded, go ahead and run the executable. And while you wait for it to install, go ahead and uh, pause the video. Alright, now that Tiled's installed, uh, if you go ahead and boot up the application, you should be presented with a screen like this. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our map. Um, so when you do, you're giving a few different options on the orientation of your map. So Tiled supports a few different tile maps, orthogonal, isometric, hexagonal. Uh, for our map, we're just going to do orthogonal. And then they give you your tile layer format. We're going to leave that at CSV. And the tile render order, uh, we'll just leave it at right down. So it's going to start in the right corner and then render it down. Uh, next is your map size. Uh, this will determine uh, how many tiles are actually going to appear in your map. Uh, so you have your width and height. Uh, we're going to leave it at 10 uh, for right now. Uh, next is your tile size. Uh, so when you're importing your sprite sheets into tiled, um, each square, each tile uh, will be this many pixels wide by this many pixels high. So if you import a sprite sheet that is 32 by 32, I recommend that you do that so that way your sprites will fit on the tile itself. Uh, for the map I'm using, it is uh, 64 by 64. Uh, so we're going to click on Save As. And then you just enter in the name of your level. And then this will take you into Tile. Um, so there's a lot going on here. So we'll kind of do a high level overview of what the different sections are. And then we'll start building our level and we'll cover the individual tools we're using at that time. Uh, the first thing you'll see up here is your toolbar. Uh, this is all of the different tools that are available to you while you're editing your map um, and also while you're inserting objects. Over here is your properties. Uh, so this is the properties of your map um, and this will change depending on if you're looking at an individual object or if you're looking at individual layers. Um, this is just the metadata that's tied to it. Over here is your layers. Um, so a tile supports multiple layers, and what we're going to be using it for is we're going to have a layer that's going to be called background, um, and this is just going to be the background layer that'll be presented to the user in our game, and then we're going to have a second layer, made, um, which will be our block layer, and these are going to be our sprites that are going to block the player's path while they're moving around the game. And the reason we'll use the layers is when we import those into Phaser, we can treat each layer as a different uh, sprite group. And then that way we can easily add colliders between the player and the blocked objects. And then down here, uh, this is where you can import your tile sets uh, that you'll be using to uh, put the tiles into your game. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to do a new tile set. And you want to browse uh, to the sprite sheet. Uh, so in this uh, project start folder, you'll see the RPG pack sheet, tile sheet. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and open that. And then down here, you want to specify the appropriate uh, tile dimensions and then the margin and spacing if there is any. The tiles in this uh, sprite sheet are 64 by 64, and then there's no margin or spacing. And then next, you can go ahead, uh, we're going to leave the name as RPG pack sheet. 
the name is important here because this is the key that we need to specify in phaser when we import our JSON object that has our uh, tile map data on it. Lastly, you'll want to check the embed and map option. Uh, this will embed the sprite sheet inside our tile map, and then that way it's part of the export um, that we'll use when we load the data into our game in phaser. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click OK. And then you'll see that our sprite sheet has been loaded down here. And each tile uh, will be created based on the properties we inserted. Um, so as long as you do the right dimensions, uh, your uh, individual sprites should be cut properly. Uh, the first tool we're going to look at is going to be the stamp brush. Uh, what that does is it allows you to click on an individual tile and you can add in the sprite you have selected here into that tile space. Um, you can like, click and drag your mouse to easily add multiple sprites at a time. Um, but if you want to do like a larger selection, we'll have to use our other tools. Uh, so just for example, if I wanted to have this grass sprite cover all the tiles here, uh, what we can do is use the bucket uh, fill tool. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and delete our layer and add a new one. And if you grab the bucket, it'll go ahead and apply the selected sprite to the group of sprites uh, that you click on. Um, so for example, let's say we had these sprites here. What the paint bucket will allow you to do is it finds similar sprites that are in that group. Uh, so uh, as you can see where I'm highlighting, I would be changing those sprites with what I have selected. Uh, the next tool is the eraser. Uh, so if you want to remove a sprite, you just go ahead and hover it like this. And you can easily erase those sprites. Uh, the next tool we have is the rectangular select tool. And what that allows you to do is select the tiles on your map. And then when you are editing your map, you can only edit tiles that are in that selection. So as you see, if I'm outside here, it's not actually applying my sprite. Uh, the magic wand tool is similar. Um, ex the main difference is it selects sprites based on if they're similar or not. So as you can see, like I selected this group here, or I can select that group. And then similarly, I can only edit sprites that are in that selection. Uh, the next tool you have is the Select uh, Same Tile. Uh, what that does is it selects any tiles that are the exact same sprite. And then that way, for that selection, you're only editing those tiles. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer. And we're going to add a new layer. And, and we're going to add a new layer. And then we're going to call it background. Right. We'll go ahead and just choose a grass tile and we're just going to apply that for all of our uh, background sprites here. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our uh, block sprites layer. Let's so make another layer. We're going to call it blocks. And one of the nice things you can do here is that you see this um, eye icon and these locks. That'll toggle the display of the layer that you're on. And you can also lock it so that way you don't accidentally edit it uh, when you're trying to edit another layer. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take some of these sprites and we're going to add... So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these uh, sprites here and we're going to add some obstacles for our player in our game. Um, so we're going to choose that sprite, let's put them here, and then for any sprites that are bigger than one tile, you can go ahead and select uh, multiple tiles, and then in your level, you can just click to add both of those sprites to your level. So you can see we can add multiple trees like that without having to select each tile individually. Uh, next, we're going to look at adding objects to our game. Um, so objects allow for us to specify uh, positions of where we want to place objects in our game. And what we can do in Phaser is when we load in that object layer, uh, we can then 
uh, associate a sprite with it, and we can automatically use the position from the metadata that's pulled in to place that sprite where we want it in our game. Uh, so to get started with layers, uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll click on the new button here, and we're going to click on object layer. And the first thing you'll notice is that our tool set has actually changed uh, to the object tool set instead of our normal uh, tiled, uh, our normal uh, tile uh, tool set. And you can place objects in a few different ways. Uh, so the first tool we're going to look at is the insert tiles uh, tool. And that allows you to use a sprite as uh, a representation of your object. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click here. Uh, so one thing to note with uh, object is they will appear where you actually click on your map. Um, so if you need to move your object around, you can click on the select object tool, and then this will allow you to drag it around. Uh, your second option is you can also input your x and y coordinates here, and then that will move the object to where you want it to be. Uh, so some of the other tools available are you can use the rectangle, the point, uh, the ellipse, or the polygon tools to represent the objects that you want to place in your game. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete our object layer, and we're going to add a new layer, a new object layer. I'm going to call it Layer. Uh, so we're going to use this layer to represent uh, the player starting point in our game. Um, so for this, I'm just going to go ahead and use a, a point. And I'm going to say the player is going to start right here. Um, so when your object's selected, um, you'll have some metadata here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a name of just um, starting position. And I'm also going to use that for the type as well. Um, so where types are uh, useful is if you're going to put many different types of objects on one layer, uh, you can use the type fields to differentiate between them. And then when we load that metadata into Phaser, we can then get our objects based on that type. Uh, you can also add custom properties to your object, and those will be imported. Um, those will also be exported in the JSON object that we import into Phaser. Um, one example is, let's say if we had multiple sprites we could associate with our enemies, um, we could add a new uh, property called um, Sprite. And, we'll, uh, and here we could put in the name of the sprite that we want to use. So we'll just say enemy1. And then that way we could use different sprites based on this property here. Go ahead and, and then you can also remove any properties uh, if you don't need them. Um, so similar to your other uh, tile layers, um, we can go ahead and turn off the display. We can also lock them. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add a few more object layers to our game. Um, in our game, we're going to have uh, enemies. Um, we're going to have some collectible coins that you can pick up. And we're also going to have a portal um, that we'll use for transitioning into the next level of our game. Um, so we're going to create a layer for each of these. Enemies. And then coins. And then finally, uh, portal. So you could easily um, put all of these objects on one layer and then use your type field to differentiate between them. Uh, but for this example, we're going to go ahead and separate them into different layers here. Um, since in Phaser, uh, they have in Phaser three, they have a nice import from layer function. And we can use that to easily create our groups of objects based on these individual layers without having to loop through our objects. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just for our portal, I'm going to add another point. I'm just going to call this portal. And we're going to go ahead and lock the layer so we don't accidentally edit it. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and add a point for our coin object. Uh, so over here, I'm going to call it coin. And one of the things you can do is you can use the select tool to uh, select our game object. And then you can copy it and then move it around the map where you see fit. 
Um, that way you don't have to manually specify the name type and place it um, each time. Um, and then it makes it a little bit easier if you're going to have multiple uh, game objects on this one layer. I'm going to go ahead and lock that. Uh, and then finally we're going to add a point for our enemy. And then same thing, I'm going to go ahead and select our enemy and just place a few of them around our map. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer. Uh, go ahead and save our level. And then finally, once you have your level finished, you can go ahead and click on File and you go to Export. Uh, you'll want to make sure you choose a JSON uh, map file, uh, so I have the .json uh, file type, and then you go ahead and name your level, and if you click save, uh, this will export it to a JSON file, uh, which then we can easily uh, import into Phaser. Now that we've covered the basics of Tiled, I'm going to go ahead and challenge you to make your own map. Um, some things to remember, if you are going to use the maps you create in your game, uh, you'll want to make sure that you uh, pay attention to what you name your layers and your sprite sheets. We'll have to use those keys when we load it into Phaser.